Hi there, this is Seth Schaefer of Team Just Cause Robotics. This is going to be a much shorter video than last time because it's only going to be a fight recap video from the Franklin Institute event that I was just at. And I am sorry that this is coming out a bit late, but I ended up being really busy the last few days and I couldn't actually get the fight videos until they were posted on YouTube yesterday anyhow. I have the original stream videos and one crappy cell phone video. I unfortunately don't have a cell phone video with another angle of the first fight at the moment. Hopefully it can be dug up because my girlfriend filmed the fight on her phone and her angle was a lot more helpful to see what's going on than the one that the stream got, but I can tell you what happened in any case. The main change that I made for this competition, since I only had a week between Norwalk and this competition, was to make this, which is a toothed version of the weapon pulley that I was using before. I had really inconsistent belt tension issues, and this is partly due to the crappy motor mounts being slightly bent. The only real way to address this was to make a toothed pulley so that I always had positive engagement with the belt. The problem with this, and the reason I didn't do it in the first place, is that it puts a lot more strain on the motor that's powering the weapon. Every time I hit something, the weapon comes to a full stop. That means the motor suddenly needs to come to a full stop. With there being a smooth pulley, the belt could slip on the pulley, which meant that the motor can kind of keep turning a revolution or two and slow down slowly, even though the weapon itself and this pulley have to come to a full stop instantly. The teeth on this pulley mean that the motor pulley is coupled directly to this one, and every time this one turns once, the motor has to turn about 3.1 times. That will always be the case, and whenever this stops, the motor has to stop instantaneously, which puts a lot of strain on the electronics of the motor and also on the motor's shaft. So I wasn't sure if this was going to cause a problem or not, but with the improper belt tension, anytime the belt was a bit too loose, I didn't have the ability to put enough torque to the weapon to self-right, and given that I lost two fights, due to having the weapon not able to write myself at Norwalk, I figured that it would be best to be able to self-write even if it came at the cost of destroying a weapon motor. So, let's see how that went. My first fight was against a multi-bot called Regret, which is not ready. really a thing. Uh, there was a long floppy bot that was unnamed that weighed about a pound and a half, I think. And then there was Nate Franklin's insane tank of an ant weight called Slim Pickens with a 2 millimeter titanium right. wedge on the front, which wedge. he said was uh -oh. the same thickness That's he used on his beetle weight Thunder Child, which has had a lot of success and went on to win the entire, the entire uh, Franklin Institute event. So his ant weight was hilariously going toe to toe with beetle weights like my own and actually I think won more than two fights even as just a one pound ant weight with that oh, insane titanium wedge. In so at this point in the fight, I He's was actually finally able to disable Slim oh, Pickens no. by oh, kicking no. a wheel off of it. And then this Batteries happened. Oh, so what happened here is um, I drove oh, underneath the floppy seven, bot, thinking nine, that I would just cut it in half. Eight, and then I went seven, in reverse, six, and that was a horrible five, mistake four, because my weapon's three. spinning at 250 miles an hour, and that means okay, it's spinning so, up at the um, front and straight down at the back. My blade the hits the top of assembly, one of the halves really of regret one. at 250 miles an hour on the uh, firm box section, and because I'm that, hitting the box saw, section, uh, it there. actually resists <laughs> the blade enough and the blade only cut about half an inch through, punched straight through the top armor, but it, in the process, launched my bot about seven feet in the air, and then I came down really hard right on one of the front wedges of Division. So the base plate was actually bent after this. The front wedge popped straight off, and most importantly, the impact shattered both halves of my top armor, and launched my lipo straight out of my bot where it carefully unplugged itself and then landed a couple feet to the right of my bot. So that was definitely a pretty embarrassing loss from a fight that I it looked like I was absolutely dominating. And uh, while it was definitely kind of stupid to lose by my battery unplugging itself, 
I think it showed overall that my bot was able to go toe to toe with wedges, and this is the first time I'd ever fought a wedge, so there is something to be said for that at least. Um, I had to replace that front wedge and the top armor. There wasn't much I could do about the base plate, but it wasn't really that damaged, so I kind of just shrugged off that damage, made sure that everything was still working, which it was, and then moved on to my next fight. So this fight was against a horizontal spinner called Professor Hexagon. This is a really vicious looking spinner, and it had not really spun up at all in its previous fight. I talked to the builders behind this bot um, before this fight, and they had access to a CNC machine and two Mark Forge 3D printers. So it was definitely built pretty well, um, but I think this was their first ever combat robot, and they were having some electrical issues. So going into this, I was very afraid of this horizontal because I know All that right. my bot's front wedges don't hold up particularly well to Professor horizontals. Hex, are you ready? But I was really hoping for at least Professor Hex is ready. being able to get Division, around behind him ready? or maybe to the wheels, which his Division wheels came off in a, another Judges, fight as well two minutes. and later on in a couple, actually. I'm not sure we're so I was really hoping I could kind of take those off and just disable oh. them without Division taking too much speed. damage. But Professor Hex, trying. Um, oh, there we well, go. Both robots up to speed. Oh, Didn't first really work hit out takes that the way. front of division right off. So two Other hits in, and I've lost both of my front uh -oh. wedges. And now it's kind of a still bit spinning, of a Professor Hex trying to get back up to speed. Game of me hoping oh, no! to get at him when his spinner sort of intermittently stopping. Um, I was actually able to self right really effectively in this fight, right which I was now. proud about. Division's but here I kind of got stuck on the floor a bit. Or no, what happened here oh, was. No! He had hit the side of my bot and uh, bent the side armor right. out Ten, into my wheel, nine, so I lost that side drive, eight, so seven, I couldn't pivot, six, and uh, five, then he got me from behind, uh, and that was pretty out. much You're it. Winner by knockout, Professor Hex. So unfortunately Hooray! what happened here was his weapon clipped my weapon kind of horizontally, and it caused my weapon to flex, I think, and hit my own w motor pulley, because the motor shaft snapped in half with the pulley still attached to it, and uh, you could see the belt hanging down there at the end. That was pretty much it for me, since I can't self right without the weapon, and that was all she wrote. My takeaways from this were basically all of my 3D printed wedge attachments and really all the 3D printed bits in my bot shattered after this fight, and I think that PETG just simply doesn't have enough give and is a bit too brittle for this application, much like PLA has proven to be. So in the future I'm definitely going to be looking to 3D print all the parts in nylon, and also I am conversing with Nate Franklin about the possibility of making some 1.5mm thick titanium front wedges for the next version of Division. So look forward to that, hopefully I'll have it ready by Sword in November. So while this damage montage plays, uh, let me just talk about future plans. I definitely need to beef up the armor a bit. I'm certainly looking to put titanium in the front. I might change the rear armor a bit, at least to thicken the area around that screw hole since it broke there. Um, all the 3D printed parts I'm definitely going to be using nylon, if not carbon fiber filled nylon for the next version because PTG is just proven to be way too brittle. I really wasn't expecting it to shatter the way that it did. I thought it was a lot less brittle than PLA, but I guess I was wrong about that. And I know that lots of people use carbon fiber nylon because it's the best. I just didn't use it because it was expensive and I didn't have a printer that could handle it. But I recently bit the bullet and bought a Prusa Mark 3S. So I've been able to get some successful nylon prints thus far from that. And I'm looking forward to experimenting a lot more with higher end filaments in the future. I'm also probably going to stick with the toothed pulley for the weapon, since I'm pretty sure that it was just my weapon flexing into the pulley and hitting it that broke the shaft. And I can probably just replace that shaft and not even write off the motor. So I'm less concerned about that happening again, since I can just space the weapon a bit further from the pulley. And hopefully should be good to go for sword, which will be the next event I'm going to in November. Hope to see you there.